Hey everyone, this is Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and this is part one of our beginner's guide to sewing where we learn the ins and outs of our sewing machine. Now most of you will be learning on a very basic machine. This brother is a basic mechanical machine and this singer is a very simple computerized machine. The idea is to build up a very strong foundation before you start moving on to those really advanced sewing machines and advanced techniques. When I first started learning, I was kind of overwhelmed. So a little thing that I did was write the name of each part on a clear piece of tape with the marker as I learned them. So I have, you know, spool pin, bobbin, you know, stitch selector dial, and it just helped me so I didn't have to remember as much. Another thing before we start is you're not gonna break your sewing machine. I know people, you feel afraid to like touch the buttons or, you know, move the dials, but just feel free to experiment, feel free to play with things and just see what happens. That's how you're going to learn. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and learn our sewing machines. So let's start from the top and work our way down. On the top, we have the spool pin and the bobbin winder spindle. A bobbin is basically a tiny spool of thread that forms the bottom stitch. So go ahead and slap a couple labels here. We also have the start of the thread guide. We'll come back to that later when we actually go to thread our machine. You can see on the front that we have a stitch diagram showing every stitch you can make with the correlating stitch number. You move this stitch dial to the stitch number of the stitch you want to sew. So we'll add another label here. Now this machine doesn't have a stitch length or width knob. Instead, it has the same stitch at different lengths and widths. Over here on our Singer sewing machine, there are two knobs to customize the stitch length and the stitch width. If you are sewing a straight stitch, the width knob will change the needle position. See how the diagram shows a stitch widening and this one shows the stitch becoming longer? So you can go ahead and add a label for each of these. This knob is the stitch tension dial. The tension is basically how much resistance is applied to your thread. The thread is flossed between the two discs, so when you increase the tension number, the disc becomes closer together, thus applying more resistance to the thread. When you lower the tension number, the discs become further apart, meaning less resistance on the thread. This is important because the amount of resistance applied to the thread means more or less pull on the bobbin thread. So think of it as like a tug of war. If one side has more resistance, it will pull the other side out of balance. The idea is to have them equal. But we will get more into that later. Let's just go ahead and put our label on. Now these grooves are just a continuation of the threading system. Just follow the path down, go right between the tension discs and back up. You'll then loop the thread around to catch it on what's called a take-up lever. This lever looks just like a hook. You just want to make sure that the thread catches right down to the hook curve as you bring the thread downwards to the needle. Now over here, there is a lot going on. This long bar is where your presser foot shank attaches. The presser foot is composed of two parts, the shank and the actual foot. Some machines have high shanks, some have slant shanks, this machine has a low shank, which is actually very common. We can remove the whole thing using a screwdriver. Then press this little button to release the snap-on foot. This is our needle. Over here is the needle screw. We can loosen it to take out the needle. Put the needle back in the hole it came out of. Tighten the screw again to reinstall the needle. Our Singer sewing machine actually has a bar that comes out, and this is used for special presser feet. This metal area is the needle plate. As you can see, there are many lines and measurements to help you measure the distance between the stitch and the raw edge of your fabric, AKA a seam allowance. If you guide your fabric along these lines as you sew, you'll have a straight stitch. Now these crazy looking metal teeth are called feed dogs. Why? Because they are what feed your fabric through the machine. Not really sure about the dog part, but whatever. Now, let's get to the fun slash not so fun part, the bobbin system. So everyone take a little break, grab some coffee. This part is super important.
All right, welcome back. Let's do this. There are two kinds of bobbin systems, a top loading and a front loading. I personally prefer a top loading bobbin because it's easier to access and I can always see how much thread is left. Either way, they do the same thing. They form the bottom stitch. Just like the needle thread, the bobbin tension can be adjusted, but we will address that later during the troubleshooting video. The front loading bobbin is accessed by removing the storage compartment and flipping down this little door. So bobbins are set inside the bobbin case, which are encircled by basically this really cool rotating hook. Now, pull in this tab to remove the bobbin holder, and inside, there we go, there is a bobbin. Some are metal, this is plastic. Now this bobbin case you see here needs to be dusted roughly after each project or two to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So now let's put this little dude back. Now we'll talk about filling the bobbin and threading it up through the machine later. I just wanted to show you what all is going on down here. This is the stitch reverse button. They're located in different areas depending which machine you have. This one is on the far right, but if we go to the singer, it's closer to the sewing area. Now on the right side of the machine, we have the power sockets for the power cord and the foot control, which is usually all in one plug, as well as the on and off switch. Next, we have the hand wheel. Now the first workable sewing machines used a hand crank to actually form the stitches. Now, we only use this to lift our needle up and down when starting and finishing a seam or taking out the fabric, as well as to pull the bobbin thread up through the needle plate. When you move this, you'll also notice your feed dogs moving up and down within the needle plate. Now let's get to the fun parts, winding and installing our bobbin as well as threading our sewing machine. Now, go ahead and place a spool of thread on the spool pin. Technically, the thread is supposed to unwind from the front. Take the thread across to the front of the pivot point, this little tiny tension thing, wrap it around and guide your thread through the tiny little hole in the bobbin. Pop the bobbin on the spindle and click it over. This makes sure that the motor is powering only the bobbin winder and not the rest of the machine. Hold the thread high and press your foot controller down. Let it spin and fill up a few times and clip off the thread tail. Now pay close attention that it feeds evenly. A messy bobbin will not sew. It needs to be fed evenly. Snip the thread and congrats, you have officially filled a bobbin. To install the bobbin, turn your hand wheel towards you so the needle is in the highest position. Now, hold the bobbin holder in your left hand with the protruding bar resting on your thumb. The bobbin thread should point away from you as you insert the bobbin into the holder. Guide the bobbin thread into that tiny little cutout under the little metal flap and to the opening. Pull out an additional two or three inches of thread. Now hold the bobbin holder tab and with the protruding piece pointing up, Insert the bobbin holder into the bobbin case. You should hear a definite click and bam, your bobbin is installed. Now flip that door back up like the awesome sewist you are. Actually, we, we still need this door open, but that felt pretty good, didn't it? Now to thread the needle. First, lift your presser foot, turn the hand wheel towards you to bring the take up lever to the highest position. Guide your thread through the first hook then through the second, down the groove, floss through the tension discs, bring back up to the take-up lever, making sure to catch the thread on that metal hook, and down the groove to right above the needle. Lower your presser foot and guide the thread through the eye of the needle. Lift the presser foot again and pull the thread under the foot. While holding the needle thread between your fingers, turn the hand wheel towards you a full rotation you'll see the needle thread loop around the bobbin thread. Now gently tug on the needle thread to help bring the bobbin thread up through the needle plate. Once it has come all the way up, pull both the 
needle thread and the bobbin thread underneath the foot and behind. That is how you thread this machine. Let's go ahead and try it on a different machine. It's very similar, but you'll get the idea. Now threading this machine is very, very similar to threading the other machine. The only difference is the tension disc placement is in between the grooves and the tension dial is off to the side. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same. For a top loading bobbin, also called a drop in bobbin, the winding is the same, but this time we will drop the bobbin directly into the bobbin case. So make sure again to hold that thread away from you, pop the bobbin in, clip it on that tiny little cutout, it's very small, then follow along that metal groove and bring it up to the top right hand corner, leaving some threads sticking out. To bring up that bobbin thread, once again, we are going to turn the hand wheel towards us, one full rotation, gently tug on the needle thread to help bring that bobbin thread through and bring the two threads back behind the presser foot. This is a basic accessory kit that you get with your sewing machine. These up here are spool pins. This is for horizontal spool pins. The one on the brother machine is a vertical spool pin. So these don't apply to the brother, but it does for the singer. These are extra bobbins, set of needles, twin needle, darning plate, buttonhole foot, zipper foot, sew on button foot. And this is an extra spool pin for when you're using two needles. So you'll need the two threads. And this is the screwdriver you use to uninstall your presser foot and to remove the needle plate. And last but not least, the most important thing you can do to learn how to sew, and you're gonna hate this, is to consult your manual. There's lots of diagrams, lots of guides, things that are gonna really help you understand your machine and make sure you're doing things the correct way because every machine is a little bit different. Another thing to know, is sewing can be very frustrating. Ask any seamstress who's been doing this for 20 years, they still run into problems every now and then. Don't feel like you can't sew because you know your bobbin messes up or it's not stitching. Just message us, comment us on our webpage on sewingpartsonline.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest. Reach out to us, we are here to help and be sure to subscribe by hitting that button below and stay tuned for next week's video.